Today on Thrifty Whiskey, the guys will be reviewing Balcone's Texas Potsdale Bourbon. Unlike most commercially available bourbons which are made using a column still, this bourbon is made using a pot still. Using a pot still for your bourbon often results in more oils and a richer flavor, but it is not as efficient at distilling as a column still. While this whiskey is only two years old, the extreme heat of Texas allows the whiskey to take on a lot of flavor in a relatively short amount of time. Additionally, this bourbon has a four grain mash bill of roasted blue corn, Texas wheat, Texas rye, and malted barley of unknown amounts. Balcones Texas Pastel Bourbon comes in at 92 proof. We paid the general retail price of $30 for our bottle. As always, your prices may vary. Enjoy. Right now, that's a bourbon. I'm going right. Thanks, Joyce. Let's go ahead and dive in and see what we think. What is that? I mean, fruitiness. Yeah. Like fruity pebbles. What are you two smoking? Mixed berries. Mm -hmm. Mixed berries, I can see. Which is basically fruity pebbles. Mixed berries and fruity pebbles have very different scents to me. But I'm getting that grainy aroma with it. It's sweet. I'll say that. It is sweet. sweet. Yes. Yeah. I think it smells like honey. Actually, I'm going with Fruit Loops, not fruity pebbles. I know what fruit, fruit Loops smell like. It's not Fruit Loops for me. It smells to me like honey from bees that specifically were pollinating fruit trees. A specific fruit tree or just any fruit tree? I, I would say more big berry, so berry bushes, but it's definitely honey. What is that mustiness? Uh, and, and it lingers on the finish. It leaves and comes back for the finish. Yeah. At first I was like, oh, that is pleasantly sweet. Before I can even think of, finish my thought about that, it was like, what is that mustiness? Smells good though. Smells good and tastes good to me. I'm st starting to get honeycomb cereal. And something burnt. Burnt waffles with maple syrup. Burnt waffles or burnt toast? Not burnt burnt, but like. Yeah, just like. Just, just crisp. Singed. Blackened. Yes. Just slightly blackened. But that is spot on. Okay, second sip, not as much mustiness. But the third sip, it comes back. I taste somewhat oily. I'm not sure if I like that mustiness or if I hate it. It's dwindling for me, it's going away. I certainly don't hate it, but I'm not sure that I like it. It's becoming like an acquired flavor to it. The nose is amazing though. I am digging this nose. If you dig it without water, you should add some water. Adding water. It just vanishes. Oh. It's, it's not quite that bad. I think it's different without, or with water rather. Brings more of the grain note forward. Yeah, it brings more grain. The more I'm cereal. still getting a little bit of that fruit and a little bit of that like honey sweetness, but not nearly as much. Much more grainy. Now I get the fruity pebbles. If you're if you're talking about the honeycomb, it's the honeycomb is now more forward or the the grain cereal yeah. aspect of it. Water smooths it out. Yup. Brings a little bit of the spice forward, but that's really good. I'm getting orange marmalade. It's like I'm still getting that burnt toast flavor and I think that's what the mustiness was is that the char on a, on mm -hmm. burnt toast with marmalade. We're going to move into ratings now. We want to know what you guys think of this whiskey on a scale of 0 to 5 for the nose, palate and finish. The nose I thought was incredibly inviting. I'm going to give it a 3.5 on the nose. I like the notes I got. There was just something missing. On the palate, I thought the palate was fantastic. I do think across the board it was better without water, which is weird because normally I think I like things with water just a smidge better. On the palate, I really like the notes. That fruitiness mixed with that honey sweetness, mixed with a little bit of spice. I'm going to give it a 4.5 on the palate. And on the finish, there was enough there to actually talk about, which is an improvement from things we've had previously today. I'm gonna give it a three. It was a nice average finish. The notes carried through. That weird musky note that hit at the beginning came back for the finish. Pretty much with Eric all the way on this one. Basically what he said about the nose, I, I second all of that. I'm actually going to go a four on the nose on this one. I thought it was very pleasant, very inviting. I was excited to try this whiskey. My first sip of it, I was taken aback. I sensed the sweetness and I was waiting for the sweetness and anticipating that sweetness. 
and got overpowered by the mustiness. But that mustiness actually grew on me the more I drank this. I'm actually going to give the palate a four on that as well. And then the finish kept me wanting to go back for more, which is what I think a finish should do in a whiskey. I'm going to go three and a half on the finish. I'm going to give the nose a four. I'm tempted to give it a 4.5, but I'm going to go four. It's sweet. It's got some fruit notes. Right now, I'm feeling like a blueberry maple syrup, and it's been changing all the while, developing. On the palate, I'm going to go four as well. I think the nose carries into the palate really well. I think it's a mm -hmm. solid uh, tasting whiskey. The finish, I'm going to go 3.5. I think it's a solid finish. It's not super impressive, but it's fine. With those ratings, we're going to move on to guesses. Our viewers want to know what we think the whiskey type is, what the proof is, what the retail price is, and then they also want to know what we would pay for this bottle. I'm going to go Irish. I think it's a low proof, 84. Actually, hold on a bit. No, I'm going to go 86 on the proof. Price range, I'm going to say 22 and I'd pay 20. No, I'll go 22. From the beginning, I thought this was a bourbon. I'm sticking with that. I think that this is an 84 proof bourbon. I think it retails in the low to mid 20s, 24-ish. And I would pay every cent of that. I'd probably pay 26 for this. I'm going to go Irish. I'm going to go 80 proof. I think it probably costs around 25. I would be willing to pay 30 for this. For, for an Irish. That's our guesses. Let's go ahead and see what this bottle is. Today we drank, oh, what? Ooh, it. interesting. What? Texas bourbon. I'm two for two on types so far. Ooh, that's a- And it's a pot oh, still guy. Today we drank Balcones Texas Pot Still Bourbon, straight bourbon whiskey. So it's bourbon in an Irish style. Oh, it's just a pot still. Yeah. It is going to get different flavors because it's in a pot still instead of a column still, like most bourbons are these days. Most of your distillers are distilling in column stills because they're more efficient than pot stills. It is two years old, but they were talking about Texas here. Texas has a lot of heat. Things age faster. If you were to actually wait for whatever a length of time that you're expecting, you know, oh, it's not at least 10 years. Trust me, you do not want a 10 year old Texas whiskey. It's gonna taste like wood and that's about it. It's also gonna be like 160 proof. The mash bill, we don't have exact amounts, but we do know it's using roasted blue corn, Texas wheat, Texas rye, and malted barley. Not only is this pot still, it's four grain. But I'm wondering if the roasted corn is what was given it that burnt. Yeah. Obviously new charred oak barrels. The distillery is Balcones. The general retail price is 30. We paid 30. Just not th sure I would pay 30 for it. I'm not, I mean, I said 30, but I also said 30 for Irish. But at the same time, it's pot still and 92 proof. Yeah. And a Texas and whiskey. Texas. It's unique enough that those bunch of unique factors, True. I think I'd be willing to pay yeah, 30 yeah, for Yeah, it's, like, it's pot still. It's Texas. It's higher, higher proof for, yeah. the, you know, not super high, but it's higher. And it does have a lot of character to it. Yeah. So let's talk about character real quick. Tasting notes from our sites. On the nose, people got oak, sweet, caramel, corn, vanilla, spice, brown sugar, apple, raisins, and buttered corn. On the palate, bitter, leather, oak, creamy, sweet, spice, and honey. And on the finish, spice, oak, smoke, dry, cocoa, bitter, char, and medium length. Okay. So the char was there. Yep, char's there. Okay. The thing gets me though is that we got a lot of fruit. For those of you who care, this is batch TPSB 21-1, February 26, 2021. For you people who are looking to start OSC collection and want some unique things in your whiskey collection that are still in the budget, you know, price range, this is going to be one of those things. Mm. Not just the Texas part, but also the pot still part. Yes, I don't by know far. don't know any other pot still bourbons that are in our price range. I think this is definitely a unique bottle. It kind of reminds me of, um, actually not in taste or anything, but uniqueness. It kind of reminds me of Paul John Nirvana and it's like, you know, an Indian whiskey in our price yeah. range that you can get that yeah. really kind of like rounds out or adds uniqueness to your collection. As far as the $30 price range, I don't know if I pay 30 for this just as a whiskey, 
but with the interesting aspects of this that I can share with my friends and the story behind it. Story does matter. Okay, you've convinced me on the price, all right? <laughs> I, I, would, I would pay 30 for this. For the story, though. For for the uniqueness. Not necessarily for the whiskey. So if all you care about is the whiskey and drinking it, that's our thoughts on this bottle. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Give us a like if you like what we're doing here. And until next time, may the winds of fortune sail you. May you sail a gentle sea. May it always be the other guy who says, This drink's on me. me.